Yep. Now, another yep. thing that, uh, you know, you talk openly about is you're a, you were a firefighter and that's where the, the term engine two, uh, the engine two diet came from. So for our listeners who don't know your background, if you could just give us a quick sort of summary of, um, what you did, um, when you decided to make your dietary transition and what type of an effect it had on your fellow firefighters. Absolutely. Uh, so I've been eating this way now, when I say this way, a whole food plant-based uh, oil-free diet. So when I say oil-free, no added refined oils for 32 years. And I was greatly motivated and um, enswayed by my father and his research at the Cleveland Clinic going back to 1984, showing that you can reverse heart disease by eating this way. As a professional athlete, I ate this way to fuel myself um, with you know, the strongest possible fuel. And when I became a firefighter for the city of Austin in 19, 1997, uh, I was made fun of like crazy. I, I cannot imagine a more hostile environment to be trying to eat this way than a, a firehouse, probably in any city in America, um, because it totally goes against the grain. But in 2003, what happened is we were sitting out on the porch at Fire Station 2 in Austin, Texas, and we had a little bet to see who had the lowest cholesterol level, and the results came back uh, after the next day when we drove down to the lab to get tested. And one of my firefighting brothers had a total cholesterol at the age of 33 of 344 milligrams per deciliter, which is basically means he's a, he's a dead man walking. And he had a horrendous family history of men in his family perishing from heart disease before the age of 50. So I challenged this particular firefighter and the other guys at Fire Station 2 in an effort of support to rally around this firefighter's um, huh, to save his arteries and to save his life. Let's all go in as a, a in, as, in an act of solidarity to help uh, to help this guy. And so that's exactly what we did. And we started this kind of tradition at Fire Station Two in Austin, Texas, um, where you know instead of eating steaks, we're eating you know tofu steaks. Instead of having uh, pizzas with with pepperonis. We're having pizzas with sun-dried tomatoes and broccoli. Instead of having uh, beef fajitas, we're having tempeh fajitas with all the fixings on corn tortillas uh, without lathering everything in, in, uh, in Crisco, but instead, you know, veggie broth or, or just water or, uh, or orange juice. Um, and that's, that's where it was all born, right, at a, at a fire station in in Austin, Texas, really probably the most unlikely place imaginable. But these guys thrived. This particular person's cholesterol level went from 344 to 196 in 20, 27 days, lost about 14 pounds. All the, you know, all the kind of intangibles like energy, sleep, gastrointestinal distress improved dramatically. And we were off to the races uh, as, a, as a crew at Fire Station 2. Um, and now the cool thing, Cyrus, is that, like, especially with the launch of the Game Changers here in the last, you know, last couple of weeks, I get emails every day from firefighters, fire departments that are looking to turn around their culture. And they want to know how to do it. What kind of programming can they introduce? Uh, how do they get their guys to look at, you know, look at food differently instead of like because as you talked about in the very beginning of this interview you know all these guys if you if you take away their their meat you take away uh their ribs you take away their 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 steaks you you in some ways they feel like they're they're being stripped of their identity as men because they so self-identify um as men by eating meat so they really need somebody to kind of take them and and lead them out of this very destructive mindset and lifestyle 
and show them um, show them the beauty and uh, that that is there has always been there, but they've just been so shut down from being able to see this very vibrant, magnificent, healthy uh, world because of some very very inaccurate associations that they've they've made their whole life around fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans being you know girly food and uh and not being manly food um so it's so funny now now that i'm just kind of talking and, and trying to think about this how they have all these inaccurate assumptions about what it means to eat you know vegetarian vegan plant-based but all the assumptions that they think are true about how they eat are actually the false assumptions, right? Yeah, so, I mean, a really it's really good like, way to think about it. It's 180% ass backwards, you know? Correct. So the way they're eating is the true weak way to eat. And the way they think is weak is the true strong way to eat. So you got to – somehow you have to make that flip with this culture – of firefighters, of policemen, of, you know, whatever group it is, athletes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason that people make a lot of false assumptions without even knowing it is because they become pawns for very effective marketing campaigns. And products are marketed towards men all the time, and they have the word protein written on it. As soon as you write the word protein on a package, you'll get more sales. You'll get more men believing that they have to eat that in order to not waste away, in order to continue to be athletic, in order to continue to be a man. And uh, unfortunately, this information actually leads them towards increased chronic disease. Now, yeah. Especially in the firefighting world. Yeah, you, as a firefighter, you're trained in a very physically demanding environment and your job is very physically demanding. But yet... Uh, just because firefighters are, you know, exerting a lot of physical energy on a daily basis, I think a lot of them make the assumption that they can out-exercise a bad diet. It doesn't matter what I'm eating, Rick. As long as I get enough calories in me, I'm going to continue to be able to perform my job well. But yet, even firefighters, they suffer from standard American diseases just like the rest of the population. True or false? Oh my God. So everything you just said is absolutely true. Uh, exponentially true. <clears throat> In fact, you know, the number one cause of, of death amongst firefighters in the line of duty is heart disease. Um, there was a study done just about maybe three or four years ago in fire, fire engineering magazine. And they found that 80% of paid and volunteered firefighters across the country are either overweight or obese. 80 percent wow that's that's unbelievable I mean, that's that's greater than that's greater than uh you know the um the population, the like, population. Right, like right now i think the cdc has said that 74 percent of america is considered overweight or obese right so right. it's more than america in general that's just like mind-boggling to me and it's because these firefighters they're so misinformed. Like you just said, they're marketed to death. They believe that if you want to be like the rock, you got to have the milk, the milk protein. I mean, the milkshake, right? You got to be doing your, your, I mean, I have, I have fire, firefighter friends that drink a gallon of whole milk a shift, right? Every 24 hours thinking that they need it, right? And that it's a healthy food. It's like, Wow. This is a gallon of milk per shift? That, that's, that, that is their goal. They bring in a gallon, and their, their goal is to get a gallon. In. I have firefighters that are doing shots of coconut oil but before every meal, between, before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, thinking they're doing the smart, you know, David Asprey, you know, bulletproof me, uh, you know, thing, right? I just and, cringe literally thinking about either drinking a gallon of milk or taking a shot of coconut oil. I just, it just, it literally hurts me to my core. Yeah, it, it, it hurts me seeing it. Um, but this is how misinformed uh, this particular demographic is when it comes to nutrition. 
and uh and it's almost it's it's you know it's almost this it's a new it's a nutritionally toxic environment uh exponentially more so than what you'll see out in america at large because everything is deep fried uh you know everything is is cooked in crisco butter lard uh every meal has to have at least 50 percent of the plate that is comprised of some sort of a dead animal uh it is it is very unfortunate. So that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working, for example, with the city of Pittsburgh, with their emergency personnel, with firefighters, police, and EMS, and we launched the first ever seven-day rescue challenge with the city to try and show what's possible in just seven days when they can, like, let go of all their preconceived notions, go into this as an experiment, Hey, we're not asking you to do this for the rest of your life. Just, this is an experiment. It's an adventure and healthy eating. And then we're testing them with before and after biometric screenings, right? And these guys walk away going, wow, this is not at all what I thought it was. My cholesterol came down 60 points. My fasting glucose came down from 119 to 98. I lost nine pounds. I am getting blue steel like never before, right? I mean, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they realize, wow, this is not what I thought it was. Good stuff. Absolutely. So you see those at your in-person in -person immersions. We see those at our Mastering Diabetes retreats here in Costa Rica. And yeah. just like you're saying, it doesn't take very much time to start to see rapid changes in biomarkers that actually matter, whether it's cholesterol, total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, fasting blood glucose, insulin use at meal time, blood glucose in a post meal setting. All of these markers improve in a very short period of time. It's not a very hard sell and, it, and it's really powerful. I'm always flabbergasted at just how quickly these results happen. It's truly amazing. Yeah. Yep, and it's one of the reasons why you know, I've been doing, I've been in this space now since 2009, since I first wrote Engine 2. And I've been throwing these, these immersion retreats since 2010. And now we're throwing, you know, three, well, about four to five of these a year. And just like you with your retreats, it's some of the greatest work that we do all year round because you get, you get to start with this population of people and then you bring them through to the other side over the course of the, five to seven days. And it's one of the most exciting, gratifying things that we do, I think, as advocates in, um, in letting people see the power of, you know, what's at the end of their fork and, um, and, 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 and giving them the power to then go home and, and turn their life around in ways they never imagined that go far beyond just the food you're eating, right? So they can be better at their jobs. They can get out of a crappy relationship. Uh, they can all of a sudden start moving again and exercising, which is something they haven't done in years. And they realize, wow, I've forgotten what these quadriceps feel like, right? I've forgotten, you know, uh, my that I had abs. Well, you know, I mean, it's like they they feel like they're coming back to life again. It's a beautiful thing. 